Hey, Timmy. Yeah, you. Do you want to be a Disney princess? Great. Follow these seven easy steps and you'll be a Disney princess in no time. Step one. You know your mom who you love so much? Erase her from existence. Yay! You'll be continuing a long and wonderful tradition of motherless Disney princesses. Step two. Sing for no apparent reason. Sing, sing, sing. Whenever speaking is required, sing about it. I just took a math test. Failed a number by number. And now I'm singing about it. Cause I need a tutor bad. A whole new fail. A new fantastic all time low. No one else scored this low. I checked below, but now I see that, and I'm just a super slow. It gets better. If you want to be a classic Disney princess, you can sing about your undying love for a prince you met two and a half scenes ago. And if you want to be all modern and progressive, you can sing about being confused. And then sing about your undying love for a prince you know nothing about that you met two and a half scenes ago. Step 3. Speaking of princes, you'll have to get married to one, Timmy, to become a real Disney princess. The less you know about him, the better. Fine. I guess Disney made a few exceptions, so we can skip to step 4 too. Come back, Timmy. Step 4. Dream, Timmy. Dream big happy dreams. Like spending the rest of your life with someone you know nothing about, because he's the love of your life. Or wanting to see the whole big wide world. Or getting married so you don't have to do chores anymore. And if that doesn't work out, just make the rodents do it. <laughs> Step 5. Speaking of rodents, you'll need to find a faithful companion, preferably an animal or inanimate object which you constantly sing to and confide in for no apparent reason. Hey Timmy, did you find one? Great, sing to it so it'll join you in your adventures. Great job. Step six, find a dress and work it girlfriend. Princesses always look good in dresses and you're no exception. And last but not least, step seven. Make the Disney company billions and billions of dollars. No, no, Timmy. Not that way. That'll take forever. To be a real Disney princess, you'll be franchised by the Walt Disney Company like the Mickey D's of fairy tale endings. Big D will slap your face on every doll, toy, piece of apparel, theme park, and furniture they can get a hold of. Being royalty is hard work. Guess what, Timmy? Today is your lucky day. We're launching our new Big Princess Little Princess program just for you and you get to choose your very own mentor princess. Doesn't that just sound swell? Oh, I see you selected Rapunzel. Great choice. Rapunzel's considered one of the new Disney princesses so if you can pick up some tips from her, you can really get through to the younger, edgier demographic these days. Rapunzel would also be an awesome role model for you because she's not those classic Disney princesses that just waited to be rescued. She escaped the tower she was trapped in herself and showed initiative to kick some serious butt to learn the truth about the world. And Oh no, just hold on a minute there, mister. You're making Rapunzel sound like she's old, Miss Independent, but I don't think she's all that in a bag of chips. Wait, how'd you get in here? Leave now! If you don't pipe down, I'm gonna club you over the head with this glass slipper. <laughs> uh, good point. Uh, go ahead. Like I was saying, Timmy, Rapunzel isn't all that. If she was so independent, why doesn't she actually do anything for herself? So yes, you say that she escaped her wicked stepmother and found her way to the floating lights she's been wondering about her whole life. But she didn't actually do any of that herself. What do you mean? Well, Rapunzel essentially blackmails Flynn into getting her out of the tower using a frying pan instead of finding a way out herself. She uses the same frying pan to force him to actually find the floating lights while she just sat there. 
Rapunzel would basically still be locked up in the tower if Flynn hadn't tried sneaking in. You do know the frying pan was just for humor, right? I get it. I'm not saying Rapunzel is a bad person, but I don't think she's the role model many people seem to think she is for little princesses everywhere. Rapunzel isn't as independent as Disney's marketing team would have you believe. All her hobbies are traditional female interests, like painting, baking, pottery, sewing. She never actually spends any time alone finding herself since she's bounced around directly from her wicked stepmother to Flynn. A metaphor for parent-husband bride exchange if I ever saw one. I don't see her as any more progressive than Cinderella or Snow White or Sleeping Beauty. And to top it all off, she's voiced by Mandy Moore. Ooh, that was low. You know what? Even Disney was sexist in the way they marketed Rapunzel's film. The film was originally going to be called Rapunzel, but they decided to change the name to Tangled because they thought boys wouldn't have wanted to see it if the title had a girl's name in it. Good point. <laughs> I wouldn't want to see a movie with a lame title like Rapunzel. Ow! Why'd you punch me? Can you ever imagine a company changing a movie's title from a boy's name to some generic one to attract a girl? Disney really showed their support for Rapunzel as a strong, independent woman, huh? But, uh, at the end of the movie, isn't it Rapunzel the one who independently saves Flynn by using her magical hair to bring him back to life? Actually, it's Flynn who saves Rapunzel by cutting her hair. What, Rapunzel couldn't have thought of that herself? And it's her hair that saves Flynn. All Rapunzel did was cry. Maybe we should make Rapunzel's hair a Disney princess instead. It would make a much better role model at least. Bash, bash, bash. Can you at least be constructive for Timmy's sake? You know what? You're right. Timmy, you know who would be a much better big princess for you? I'm going to set you up with Belle from Beauty and the Beast. She's a much better role model for you. Isn't she just another classic Disney princess like the ones you were bashing earlier? Well, she's from the same era, but she's unique in a few different ways. Such as? Well, first of all, Belle doesn't give in to peer pressure. She just does what she wants. She reads books. She dreams of exploring the world. She stands up for her father and herself. She doesn't marry the Brad Pitt of bumpkin Disney villages just because she's supposed to. Hmm. I guess that does make her more independent than Rapunzel. Exactly. And Princess Timmy's all over the world deserve a strong, independent woman to show them what it means to be a real Disney princess. I think both Timmy and I can agree with you on that one. You know what's also great about Belle? She's selfless. She freely gave herself up for her father, essentially ending what she thought were her life and her dreams. Yep. Point Belle on that one, too. And finally, she didn't judge a book by its cover when it came to Beast. She saw the inner beauty inside him rather than his hideous exterior. I have to take issue with you on that one, good madam. Um, can you put away the frying pan? It's kind of scaring me. Fine. You may talk. <sighs> well, even though Belle supposedly saw past Beast's exterior to the real him, I don't think she really learned to accept the real him. Instead, she just changed him until he was suitable for her. Mm, I can see why you might think that way, but here's the way I see it. Belle didn't really change anything about Beast. She just refined the diamond in the rough that was him and smoothed over the edges to reveal the beautiful diamond heart beneath. You do know what the purpose of the original Beauty and the Beast tale was, right? It was supposed to allay the fears of young brides who were being married off to older, creepy men in arranged marriages. The whole point being, even if this old, creepy guy is ugly and harsh, and smells like Ben Gay. Deep down, he'll turn out to be gentle and kind once you've gone through all the abuse and ugliness, of course. That sounds like wonderful road modeling for all the young girls out there who should be forced into marriage. Don't you agree, Timmy? Okay, that's totally unfair. You can't compare the original story to the Disney version for deeper meaning. I mean, look at Pocahontas. I don't think either of us want to touch that with a 10-foot colored wind. Agreed. Okay. Fine. Not even thinking about the original fairy tale, Bee screams and bellows and Belle takes it like a good wife to be. But she didn't take it, she told him to shove off. And then cried like a little girl about it. You'll cry like a little girl when I smack you with this frying pan. Just admit it, uh, Belle isn't as perfect as people prop her up to be. She takes verbal abuse and tries to change someone instead of falling for who he is. Hello? Were you listening at all? Diamond Theory? And anyway, it was mostly the servants who were actually trying to change Beast by giving him manners. And even more importantly, 
The only real change that happened was that Beast learned love and compassion. Things that Belle helped him see, but he ultimately had to learn it on his own. Point female narrator. Uh, I am so sick of you slamming Rapunzel and then looking at Belle through fairy tale colored glasses. Rapunzel had it a lot harder than Belle family wise, and she still came out with a good heart. Unlike you, 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 you jerk! Oh! Now we've resorted to name calling, I see. I would never stoop down to your level, you. you. poopy head. Isn't this supposed to be about finding a good role model for Timmy? Forget Timmy! Just admit it. I'm right and you're wrong. I'm right. No, I'm right. Belle! Rapunzel! Ow! That pan hurt! Now look what you've done. You've gone and scared Timmy off. Now he'll never know what it's like to have a proper Disney princess to look up to. <sighs> Sorry. M maybe I was a bit too harsh. After all, uh, Disney princesses are people too. Uh, sort of. Y you know what I mean. They all have qualities I admire, and even if they're not 100% perfect role models, they're characters with good hearts that speak to us all on some level. And I think that's more than good enough for me. Speaking of more than good enough, I was just checking out your butt mail narrator. I've never noticed before, but now that Timmy isn't here distracting me with all that weird facial expressions and the whiny, I need a mentor face, I finally noticed what a fine piece of narrator you are. You're not so bad yourself, female narrator. Hey, uh, you want to grab some dinner sometime? I know a great little exclusive place where you can get both a dinner and a show. Why, male narrator? I thought you'd never ask. <laughs>